I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect Legendary Edition, Commander Cory Shepard was able to rescue the colonists of Zeus Hope by taking down the ancient and mysterious Thorian plant monster thing. Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to another episode of Mass Effect Legendary Edition right here on Missile Dine Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Mass Effect video. In this episode, we are going to arrive on the Normandy, and uh, there's a there's a treat here, and I can't wait for you guys to see this. Is like my favorite first five minutes of an episode you will out will ever see in anything ever. Uh, so let's let's jump into it because this 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 is some good stuff. Huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres every single day around 2 p.m. Eastern. I sincerely appreciate you guys and I love hanging out with you. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so that you know when new episodes are premiering. So, let's jump into it. Commander, you look pale. Are you suffering any ill effects from the cipher? Um, I feel kind of strange, actually. The cipher shook me up a bit. I might be able to help you. I am an expert on the Protheans. If I join my consciousness to yours, maybe we can make some sense of it. Um, kind of sounds hot. Do it. Hurry. We don't have much time. Relax, Commander. Embrace eternity. <laughs> Incredible. All this time, all my research, yet I... I never dreamed. I am sorry. The images were so vivid. I never imagined the experience would be so... intense. You are remarkably strong-willed, Commander. What you have been through, what you have seen, would have destroyed a lesser mind. You're damn right. Did you see anything? The beacon on Eden Prime must have been badly damaged. Large parts of the vision are are missing the data transferred into the commander's mind is incomplete so nothing useful you sure you didn't come across any kind of clue or hint something we might have missed everything i saw you already know you were right about the reapers the protheans were destroyed by a race of sentient machines i think it is obvious there is a connection between the reapers the protean extinction and the conduit but i did not see anything that would help us find it so now what what's our next move I was able to interpret the data relayed through your vision, what was there at least, but something was missing. Saren must have the missing information. Maybe he found another beacon. If we can find the missing data from your vision, I can... I can... Oh. Again? I'm sorry. The joining is exhausting. I should go to the medical bay and lie down for a moment. Are you okay? Dr. Chakwash should take a look at you. That will not be necessary. I just need some rest. Somewhere quiet. It didn't tire you me sure out. You sure it was the joining? I feel fine. Your role in our communion is passive. I am the one who must submerge myself in your mind. Drown myself in your thoughts. It is more difficult than it looks. The human subconscious instinctively resists the joining, Commander. A strong personality like yours makes it even harder. Oh. Thanks. We're done here. Dismissed. I've sent off the Pharos report, Commander. You want me to patch you through to the Council? Yes, please. Patch him through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. Commander, Exogeny should have told us about the Thorian. It would have made your job much easier. You might have been able to capture it for study instead of destroying it. Yeah, I'm still pretty sad about that. The Thorian liked to enslave minds. Anyone who studied it would have ended up as one of its thralls. Perhaps it's for the best, then. At least the colony was saved. Of course it was saved. Shepard would go to any lengths to help a human colony. I help everyone. Being human had nothing to do with it. They were in trouble. Admirable. But sometimes specters have to make sacrifices. I hope you're willing to do that when the time comes. Goodbye, Commander. We will be waiting for your next report. I don't have to make sacri- Oh, shit. Dr. Tassoni. Commander? We need to talk. The three of us. Oh, man. This is a rather awkward situation. Yeah. I'm not trying to make anyone uncomfortable. I'm just trying to figure out where I stand. Yeah. All right, let's talk. Maybe we should try to work this out. 
I think we must. I may not know much about human relationships, but I understand the concept of jealousy. I'm not jealous. I'm confused. I, mean, I thought we had something, ma'am. I, I didn't realize that you were a... Well, that you prefer other women. I am not exactly a woman, Lieutenant. My species only has one gender. Yeah, but you look... All right, Shepard. Make a choice. If you're not serious about me, it'll hurt, but I'll get over it. But until you tell me, I can't get over it. Um, I'm just... I'm just... Can't I have both? Why do I have to make a choice? Maybe the three of us could... No, sorry, Shepard. I mean, if I'd known... Well, maybe we just aren't right for each other. I hope things work out for you, too. I've got a lot of work to do, Commander. Mission reports, that kind of thing. You know how it is. I... You know... Hey, don't blame me for trying. I feel bad for him, Shepard. I hope he'll be okay. Don't worry about him. Caden's a Marine. He'll be fine. I suppose you're right. I am sorry you were put in this position, but... I'm glad you chose me. Well, I... I don't well, believe we should continue this discussion here in the comm room, Shepard. You know where to find me if you want to have a more private conversation. Well, that was awkward. So I think we should probably go talk to our squad and maybe uh, see what's going on after the events of Pharos there. Pharos is a story world. And after every story world, of course, we have more that we can talk about with our with our squad and new dialogue options. And of course, Joker will say something hilarious. So, uh, hey, Commander, next time we touch down, let's try not to park the ship in a colony of mutant zombies. Just thinking out loud here. He's absolutely correct. Next time, just, you know, don't do not do that. Right, see ya. And let's see who else we can go talk to, which is probably going to be about everybody, especially after, you know, maybe Kaden won't want to talk to us right now. But uh, hey, you can't blame me for trying, okay? It was worth a shot. And all we did was lose Kaden. We still got Liara, which is what I wanted anyways. I just needed, I needed to have the, uh, the attempted threesome scene there for you guys. Could you imagine if I just didn't show that? You know how mad you would have been to me? Anyways, we can go to uh, the locker and actually get some new stuff here. Our first level nine weapon there. Absolutely beautiful. That's going to be useful. All right, Kaden. I, <laughs> let's check it, bud. Oh, he's going to be so mad. Anything you need, Commander? Yeah, let's talk about Liara. About right? Liara and me. Is everything all right? I'm not in high school anymore, Shepard. I'm disappointed, sure. But you make your choice. I'll do my duty. Don't worry about that. I'm sorry. You're a good man, Caden. I'm sorry it didn't work out. Just forget it, okay? Like Pascal said, the heart has its reasons, which reason can she seems like a nice girl, ma'am. I hope things work out between you two. That's very, hey, that's very mature and grown up of you. Thank you. Hey, how do you think we're doing? What's your opinion on the last mission? I'm glad there aren't many aliens like the Thorian. I don't think my stomach could take it. Hell of a deal you worked out with John, though. <laughs> if I ever get a speeding ticket, I want you to be my advocate. Yeah, I have very high charm skill. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I didn't figure you'd have time to talk with all that's going on. There's got to be some xenobiologists who want to read about the Thorian. They can wait. The paperwork will keep. Something on your mind? I'm just looking for Amir. That a briefing wasn't the right place to say how ridiculous this is. Seems like every other race in the galaxy is wrapped up in their own problems. They don't want to see what's coming. Yeah, but... Wanting to believe everything will be fine? Sounds like human nature to me. Yeah, I guess some things carry across species well enough. I should remember that after what happened with Vernus. Right. I think you'd the carry the over the crap you took from Vernus. Before I met Vernus, I knew as much as any other civilian. Aliens were weird, superior, and tried to tell us what to do. I mean, it's only been 26 years since first contact. That's not a lot of time to understand them. It was Vernus who made me see how human aliens are. They're not different or special. They're jerks and saints, just like us. Hell, by the time I got payback, I didn't even want it anymore. You got payback? I don't see you snapping very easily. What finally did it? He hurt Rana. Broke her arm. She reached for a glass of water instead of pulling it biotically. She just wanted a drink without getting a nosebleed. You know? Like an idiot, I stood up. Didn't know what I was gonna do. Just something. And Vernus lost it. 
beat the crap out of him. He kept shouting how they should have bombed us back to the Stone Age. And that's when the knife came up. A military issue talent, right in my face. I cut loose. Full biotic kick right in the teeth. Almost as strong as I can manage now. At 17, that's something. Yeah, I'd say. You wanted to help a girl you cared for. That's a noble thing. Maybe my intentions were noble, but I... I lost control. I killed him, Shepard. Snapped his neck. They probably could have saved him if they got him to an infirmary quick enough. But they didn't. Caused a stir when they shipped him home. Bot training was shut down. Kinetics folded a couple of years later. So, yeah, maybe I hated that Turian. I mean, if one ass was enough to judge a whole race, I'd hate humans too. That's a good point. A reasonable stance. Keep that level head and we'll do fine. Staying reasonable is about all we've got left. Everyone else in this galaxy seems to have gone out of their minds. Present company accepted, of course. Well, at least you're still being polite to me. Anything you need, Commander? No, no. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Commander? Lieutenant Caden Malenko. I, you know, hey, at least he's mature about everything. Also, you know, maybe you should have told me about the whole kicking a Turian's head clean off of him. Uh, and maybe, you know, maybe things would have been different, but, but you didn't, dude, so... Next time, next time, lead with that. All right, you're a lot hotter when when you, when that happens. But of course, let me just grab that. Oh wow, that's so many meta gel. Chakwas doesn't say anything new, so let's check in with our our new love here, Liara. Are we officially a couple now? What happens? Hello. Commander, are you coming to check up on me? Uh, yeah, I was worried. You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. She's the best. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. Yeah, let's talk. I like talking with you, Liara. No matter what the subject. You have been very understanding with me, Shepard. Very patient. I appreciate that. I know there are some strange beliefs about my people. I am familiar with the legend of Asari promiscuity. But those rumors have little basis in fact. When one of my people joins with an individual from another species, it is a very deep and spiritual exchange. We do not enter lightly into a union. Spiritual exchange? You make it sound almost mystical. A true union goes far beyond an ordinary melding. It is a connection that transcends the physical universe. Two become one. Thoughts and senses merge, identities intertwine. Memories and emotions weave themselves together, becoming entangled in a single, rapturous whole. It is unlike any other experience. In some cases, it can be a truly life-changing event. I'm so intrigued. Imagine if you could do this in real life. You would never fight with anybody, ever. It sounds amazing. Are you saying... No. Oh, no. Uh, I am not very good at this, am I? I'm sorry, Shepard. I am trying to explain why I have been so reserved. Did I just get shot down? That no was very the strong. The union is more than just sex. It is the lifeblood of my species, the way we Asari evolve and grow as a society. That is why I have never... Uh, I mean, that is why we must choose our partners with great care. She's never done it! Oh, that's so cute! I want you to be absolutely sure about this, Liara. I am only 106. Barely an adult by Asari standards, and I spend most of my time absorbed in my research. I never really thought about it. Not until I met you. You are very special to me, Shepard. But with all that's happened, Saren, the Geth, the Reapers, I do not know if we are ready for this. Yeah, no, I, I understand. These are dark times, Liara. Maybe once all this is over. I'm glad you understand, Shepard. There is too much at stake. We need to put aside our personal feelings and focus on stopping Saren. I wish it did not have to be that way, but we all have to make sacrifices. Let's let's talk about something else. Well, there goes me getting it. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. Bye, Liara. I guess we kind of, well, what are you gonna do? Maybe I lost both of them forever. 
I guess we can go check in on our other squad mates. Like our boy Garrus. Buddy. Commander, I wanted to thank you. For? What for, Garrus? For everything. Taking me with you, letting me be part of your team. I've learned a lot. I've thought a lot about what you've told me. About not sacrificing innocence to achieve the goal. About finding the best way through, not just the fastest. And I've been thinking about Dr. Salio, too. I convinced myself that he deserved to die, but then I started thinking about why I wanted him dead. I realized it wasn't because of what he did to those people. That was part of it, but I think most of it was because he got away from me. He escaped under my watch, and I didn't like that. I let it become personal. Is that it? Words mean nothing until you turn them into action, Garrus. What are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going back to CSEC. I think I can make a difference there. I'll also reapply for Spectre training, but I'll do it right. I won't compromise myself to get there. If the people I'm sworn to protect can't trust me, then I don't deserve to be the one protecting them. Yeah, Garrus! I'm glad you see it that way. Keep that in mind when we meet Saren. Don't worry, Commander. I will. Good guy, Garrus. Now, every time we talk to him, that's going to be the exact dialogue that he has for us. But we can check in with Ashley as well. Commander? Can we talk? Do you have a few minutes to talk? One-on-one? -on -one? I'm off duty until tomorrow. I was gonna have a small drink. Bit of a celebration. If you're interested. What's the occasion? What's the occasion? It's Armistice Day, when the first contact war ended. My family always marks it. Since I'm the only Williams aboard, I thought I'd ask you. Yeah, I'm flattered. Seems like an odd thing to celebrate. That was 26 years ago. In our family, it's not really a celebration, more like an obligation. Don't tell me you don't know about my family. My commanders always find out. It's not in my files or something? Your files are clean. There's almost nothing in your files. Technical scores and a list of crap assignments. There's a reason for the crap assignments. I'm General William's granddaughter, the commander of the Shanxi garrison in the war. The only human ever to surrender to an alien race. Oh, no. I see. That's why you drive yourself so hard. A Williams has to be better than the best, if only to avoid suspicion. That's what my dad told me the night before he retired. It takes a special kind of thick-headed to march into a job where your family's blacklisted. I did it anyway. I'm not gonna let our name go down with Arnold and Quisling. Granddad deserved better than that. So do you. What happened to your grandfather after the war? He was relieved of command as soon as Shan Shi was liberated. They brought him back to Earth in irons, but there was never a trial. They quietly demoted him and stuck him behind a desk. He retired a year later and spent the rest of his life working construction in the colonies. Sometimes we hear about attempts to get him exonerated in some official way. Nothing ever comes of him. Interesting. What about Shansi? As I recall, your grandfather held out for a long time. The Turians wrecked the orbitals in the first wave and occupied the major cities. They sat in orbit, dropping rocks on anything that moved. Granddad dispersed the troops. But when they went into the cities for supplies, the Turians would wreck a block to eliminate one fire team. Civilians were dying, his troops were starving, and he couldn't contact Alliance High Command. So he surrendered the garrison. I mean, it sounds like he did what he needed to do. He refused to sacrifice his men just to save face for humanity. You planning to throw yourself on a sword to save face for him? Would it make a difference? He's gone now. Dad's gone too. And who would it impress? I'll never be good enough for the Alliance. So now you know gonna kick me off the ship skipper nope you're a valuable part of my crew Williams if I want an opinion from the head I go to Elenko when I want one from the heart I go to you I also play a mean game of pool but anyway I've got things to do before we land I'm sure you do too yeah but I kind of still want to know about the the drink we never had well, whatever what's your opinion of the last mission a little spooky how you handle that John guy my charms very Didn't high figure you know how to speak corporate all you need to do is show them how getting what you want gets them what they want. You make it sound easy. Frankly, I just wanted to put a few rounds in him and leave. Same, actually. All right. Dismissed, Chief. Ma'am. Good talk, Ashley. Good talk. Rex, my guy. Never a dull moment with you, Shepard. You're awesome. You ever go on any missions like ours before? Saving the galaxy from certain destruction? No. But I've had my share of adventures. Oh, yeah. Tell me about them. Do you remember any that stick out? A few. I remember one time I was hired by a Volus diplomat. 
What an ass. A boldest diplomat? I guess even politicians have need of mercs from time to time, huh? Time to time. If it wasn't for politicians, I'd be out of work. They're always looking for ways to get ahead. This one was no different. He wanted me to erase his past. Get rid of an old friend who knew too much. Huh. His old friend turned out to be an Asari commando. Uh-oh. I can see why that might give you pause. What? No. Alina and I were old friends. Sort of. We met when we were both contracted to kill the same Turian. Neither of us wanted the other one to get him first. We spent more time fighting each other than tracking that Turian. An Asari commando mercenary. That's unusual, isn't it? I wouldn't say it's unusual. Mercs come in all shapes. <laughs> Anyway, when I told Alina about the diplomat's contract, she and I had a good laugh about it. Then what? So what'd you do? Well, I wasn't going to lose the contract, but I respected Alina. In the end, I let her pick the location where we'd fight. She chose some old Solarian space station overrun with mercs and smugglers. That way, we didn't have to worry about hurting any innocent bystanders. <laughs> she always was a bit of a softy. Okay, but what about the fight? What happened on the station? This is so good. What didn't happen? For two days, I chased her through that station, used my entire store of ammunition, had to kill a bunch of mercs and use their crap weapons. By the third day, the station was barely holding together. The mercs were dead or gone. Life support was failing, but I had her. She'd locked herself in the med labs. She was trying to patch herself up. Damn tough, that one. Then just when I thought I had her, the station's core went critical. Barely made it back to my ship in time. What about Alina? I assume the Asari commando didn't make it. I watched the station from a distance. I never saw her leave. And when that place blew, there was nothing left larger than a Turian's right nut. So I headed back to the diplomat to give him the good news and collect my pay. But before I got halfway there, Alina sent me a message. Better luck next time. <laughs> now, I'm not superstitious, but if someone can survive that, well, they deserve to live. At least for a bit longer. Mm, what about the Volus? What about the diplomat? He wanted her dead. I told him the truth. <laughs> Alina was still alive and she was really pissed. I told him if he wanted to live, he'd need me around to protect him. And he believed you. <laughs> he kept me on as his personal guard until he died natural causes easiest job I've ever had a little boring but credits are credits what an awesome story I could just imagine like a comic book version of that super fun unfortunately for us we never get to hear anything else about Alina throughout the Mass Effect series which which kind of stinks because that it sounds so cool Hey Shepard, do you need something? And Tally's the only one who just I should go. Doesn't have later. anything to say to us. It's kind of unfortunate that she just doesn't really talk as much. Once you kind of help her out with her geth problem and everything, and she's kind of good for her pilgrimage, then she's she's kind of that's it. That's all she's got. But with that and checking on everything that we can here with our squad and friends, it's time for Commander Corey Shepard to once again explore the galaxy solve whatever little minute problems she can where am i going so let's check what we have we need to investigate the samples while on pharos we found the personal log of an exogeny employee the doctor's notes seem to express some concern about samples they provided to a group referred to only as cerberus 
Commander Corey Shepard also found a confidential transmission while on Pharos. It's unclear exactly what's going on, but it appears Exogeny sent some kind of sample to a research facility on Notacrux. So, we are heading to the Maroon Sea Cluster. Good timing, Commander. We got a transmission coming in from the Citadel. Top priority clearance. From who? Is it the Ambassador? It's not his signature. I think it's from the Council. I'll patch it through to the comm room. Interesting. Apparently, the Council wants to meet us, so we're not going to explore the galaxy just yet. Go ahead and open this terminal. Commander Shepard, we received information that may be critical to your mission against Saren. Perfect. I'll take all the help I can get. We've received an urgent message from one of our infiltration regiments in the Traverse. You mean spies? Spectres tend to attract attention, Commander. But they are only one arm of the Council. Special task groups are often a better option for monitoring developing situations. We currently have several infiltration units scattered throughout the border regions of Citadel space. This particular unit was gathering intel on Saren. What did they find? Unfortunately, the message we received was little more than static. The infiltration team must be in a situation where they can't set up proper interstellar communications. But the message was sent on a channel reserved for mission critical communications. Whatever they were trying to tell us, we know it was important. Considering your interest in Saren, we thought you might want to investigate this. Find out what happened to our team. The signal originated from the planet Vermeer. Thank you for the info. I'll look into it. The Council prefers not to become involved in the specifics of Spectre activities. We only want you to be aware of all your options, including Vermeer. Good luck, Commander Shepard. We will keep you advised if we learn anything else. So it looks like Commander Corey Shepard learned about yet another mission, this time on the planet Vermeer. Which, of course, we do have a quest for now. And the Race Against Time quest. Now, just because we do have that quest to head to Vermeer, uh, we're not going to. I definitely recommend doing Novaria before... Or Pharos, if you did Novaria before Pharos. I would save Vermeer for last. And so, Commander Corey Shepard headed to the Maroon Sea Saga. Saga? That's not... Cluster? And headed for the Matano system. And upon arriving, she found a bunch of asteroid belts here. And upon scanning them, was able to find one and survey a metallic asteroid for a heavy metal platinum. And in the outer asteroid belt, was able to find a rocky asteroid, this time containing a Prothean data disk. On the planet of Supe, she was able to find a large deposit of magnesium. And there was only one planet for her to land on, and that was Chaska. Chaska is very early development with little more than a few pioneer teams scattered across the surface. Information is being collated about native hazards and ecology, while a massive colonist recruiting drive is gearing up back on Earth. And so, she headed there with a team of Liara Tassoni and Garrus Vicarian. Something kind of cool about the Matano system is that all of the planets are named after deities of Inca mythology, Chaska being the Inca deity of dawn and twilight. As always, sensors indicated some fun anomalies for Shepard to pick up. Worth mentioning that we have finished our Survey is Complete mission to collect all of these rare earths, gases, heavy metals, and light metals. The first deposit she was able to find was palladium, and the second, a source of plutonium. And after, oddly enough, driving through the mountains for a while, Commander Quarry Shepard found these things. I don't... I don't... She did. She. What? What are you? Now, I don't. They're just here. They don't do anything. They don't. Like, you can. You can kill them. I'm sorry. Garrus was mad at me, I think. Um. Oh, never mind. Maybe not. I just thought I would show you that for some reason. I don't. I don't know, man. I just thought I'd show that these are here. <laughs> but besides those space cows, she was also able to discover a deposit of beryllium. And easily one of the worst planets to explore. Commander Corey Shepard was able to find yet another one of the pyramids. Just like that one she found on that other planet. This time she was able to find a technician kit inside, a medical kit, and 
a box that needed to be decrypted. And outside, she was also able to find a crate that could be recovered for an artifact. This time, another Prothean data disk, which actually completed the quest to collect all of the Prothean artifacts. And finally, another crashed probe. And sensors also picked up a bunch of research facilities nearby. So she headed to the civilian structure that she could find closest to the probe. And upon popping outside, she noticed pus God all over mercy. the area. The entire colony must have been transformed. The entire colony was transformed into Geth. So she got out and headed into the building. Upon getting inside, it was very clear they were going to have a lot to deal with. Opening the doors inside, immediately noticing a ton of pus waiting for them. And while she was doing this, the trophy soldier popped. Only one more husk remained. Which she was able to put into a stasis and finish off with the Bastion specialty. After defeating all the husks in the facility, she was able to find all of the items that were nearby. And heading to the second floor, she found nothing but some metagel and a weapons locker. After finding everything she could, she headed out to proceed to the next building, which was yet another civilian structure. This time, though, no husks nearby, but she did notice that there was another building that did seem to have enemies nearby. But heading inside, unfortunately, proved to be a different story. And after taking down all of the husks in yet another building, all of the colonists, she looted the place. And in the back on the second floor, she found three storage lockers that needed to be decrypted. And after cleaning this place out, she headed to the science facility. And yet again, driving up, a bunch of husks were found outside. So after clearing out the husks, finally, she entered the science facility. The first room was like any other bunker except this one had Geth remnants strewn throughout. Proceeding into the main room of the science facility, all of the colonists that had been turned into husks awaited her. And after clearing the room of what seemed like an unending amount of husks, she was able to loot around the main room. Not finding much though, she went to the very back, like most of these bunkers. Heading to the left first, she found a room that had literally nothing in it. And so she headed to the one on the right, which opening that door, led to a room full of items. Funny story, this locked crate here is actually a source of infinite items. You can loot this crate, save your game, load your game, and then immediately loot it again. At higher player levels, this chest right here can have some of the best armor in the game. But after opening everything and using the terminal in the center of the room, Commander Corey Shepard learned that a colonial pioneer team rarely consists of more than a few dozen specialists. It's clear that none of them survived here. The Cerberus group has a lot to answer for, and she downloaded the logs getting yet another journal update. According to those logs, a visitor from an organization called Cerberus recently passed through this colony. It seemed likely this person had something to do with the transformation of the colonists. That was everything Shepard could do here in the Matano system. So she headed back to the Normandy to proceed to the next investigation of Cerberus. So she headed to the Caspian system and visited the planet of Plutonka, which she was able to survey for a source of heavy metal. On Farnari, she was able to survey for a heavy metal, this time gold. And on Antida, she was able to survey for yet another Torian insignia, this time from the Carthan outpost. And finally, she headed to the MSV Cornucopia. The Cornucopia was a Kowloon class modular conveyor of human design. While obviously adrift, the Cornucopia was not broadcasting any distress calls. 
And yet again, Commander Corey Shepard brought a squad of Liara Tassoni and Garrus Vicarian. Heading inside, just like most of these ships that she's been on, it was quiet. Too quiet. Upon heading into the major area of the ship, she realized she can't see anything. Storage boxes everywhere, incredibly tight quarters. Garrus immediately pulling out his weapon, sensing that something's not right as Hus descend from nowhere. Garrus pointing out that there's probably no survivors left on this ship. But this looks very dangerous as even more swarm all over the crew. Singularity once again showing how strong it is against Hus. After seemingly clearing the entire cargo holds of every single husk except for one that got stuck in a pile of boxes because of a bug commander cory shepherd headed further into the vessel opening the rooms on the side before heading into the cockpit discovering all of the geth materials that were used to turn these poor people into hus and finally by heading into the cockpit commander cory shepherd examined the navigation computer according to the log files the ship was out near the perseus veil vale. looks like they found some kind of alien artifact they brought it on board, and then... This doesn't make any sense. They plotted a course straight into the Perseus Vale, like they wanted the Geth to find them. What else do the logs say? The entries don't make a lot of sense after that. It's like the captain's mind was falling apart. It doesn't say anything about how the ship got back into human territory. The Geth transformed them into husks, and left the vessel where they knew it would be found. A warning to other organics not to enter the Vale. It's a good... Probably exactly what that is. Now, oddly enough, this quest did not show up for Commander Cory Shepard at all until she completed it. Upon completing it, the journal entry read the Cornucopia was exploring a region of space bordering the Perseus Vale when the crew discovered a strange alien artifact. They appeared to have been brainwashed, then transformed into husks and sent back into human space as a trap or a grim warning. And so, Commander Cory Shepard headed back to the Normandy. And finally, she headed to the Vostok system, scanning the asteroid belt to find a metallic asteroid and surveying it for a source of heavy metal, palladium. And on Potaton, she surveyed it for an yet another Matriarch Delanaga's writings. Looks like we've got an active distress beacon on the planet below, Commander. No message, just a locator signal. And she headed for the planet Notacrux. It was a verdant world with abundant water, temperate climate, a thick nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere, and a rich ecosystem. It would seem perfect for life. Unfortunately, Noda Crux was an almost, but not quite, world. Large and ubiquitous tufts of pollen that float on the high-pressure air, once inhaled by humans, would cause severe or lethal allergic reactions. And so, she headed towards the planet of Noda Crux, with a squad of Liara and Garrus. She quickly found this to be one of the hardest planets to, to explore so far, but she immediately detected enemies nearby and headed to go find them. Outside of a abandoned camp, she found Thorian creepers, the lights of which that they found on Pharos. Apparently a ship had crashed, but nearby were even more enemies. Upon taking out the Thorian creepers here, Commander Cory Shepard was able to level up. Exploring this abandoned camp, she was able to find some items. But immediately, sensors picked up some nearby surveying, the first of which was a gold deposit. Continuing on her journey, she found another ancient debris that she was able to recover for yet another Turian insignia. This time, from the Thracia colony. And while searching for a nearby probe, she was able to find some more of those dear cow things. I, I don't know. And she was able to salvage the crash probe for yet more items. And finally, while on her journey, she approached yet another building full of Thorian Creepers. After taking out the Creepers, she approached on foot. Once inside, she looted all of the items that she could find in her initial room. And noticed eerily similar things to what was in Pharos. As she approached into the main hall of the room, a bunch of Thorian Creepers approached. After backing up and clearing the entire area of Thorian Creepers, she approached back into the cargo area. Finding nothing of note to loot, 
she proceeded to the very back of the building. Heading to the right-hand side first, she finally found some items she could loot and some dead bodies. Heading to the left-hand side. Rescuers? Oh, thank God. See? I told you somebody would come to investigate that signal. My name is Dr. Ross, Chief Exogeny Researcher at this facility. We've been trapped in this room for days. We're almost out of food and water. You got here just in time. I need to know what's going on. Why is this place crawling with Thorian creepers? How do you know about the Thorian? I know what Exogeny was up to. I saw what they let the Thorian do to those colonists, so I destroyed it. Our secret's out then. No point in my lying. You already know the worst. The creepers here were created using altered samples from the specimens on Pharos. We discovered a way to turn them into docile, obedient servants. Everything was going fine until a few days ago. Then all the creepers suddenly went berserk. Only a handful of us made it back into the safety of this room. So Shepard asked about these berserk creepers. Any idea why they turned on you? Maybe there was still some kind of link between the creepers and the Thorian back on Pharos. The Thorian was unlike any other life form we've ever studied. I can't explain how, but maybe when it died, it, it somehow set off the creepers here. So she asked about other survivors. Any chance some of the other people at the base might still be alive? Hmm, I doubt it. Too many creepers out there. They never stood a chance. We're the only ones left. And the generic distress signal. Why didn't you send a clear message asking for help? All we had was that signal from the emergency beacon. This is a closed communications base. Exogeny was worried about someone on the project selling secrets to a rival firm or reporting our work to the authorities. We have no direct communication with the outside, only the emergency beacon. It sends a general distress signal to the Exogeny site on Pharos. They're supposed to send a team to respond inside of 24 hours, but it sounds like they had problems of their own. I've heard all I need to. Look, I know what we did here was wrong. I'll admit that. But it's over now. There's no sense reporting this to the authorities, right? You were in charge of this project. The safety of the staff was your responsibility. They trusted you, and you betrayed that trust. Be reasonable. I didn't mean for this to happen. Besides, how does it help anyone if I end up in jail? Normally, Exogeny would have my back, but it sounds like they're going to have their hands full cleaning up the mess on Pharos. But I've got money. A nice little emergency fund I set up. It's yours if you let us go. Unfortunately, I can't do the that. The victims here deserve justice. I have to take you in. Uh... That's not going to happen. Open and fire. they'll turn Open on us, fire. and we will just destroy them. After she dismantled these scientists, Exogeny's second-rate mercs proved no match for a well-trained Alliance Marine. With the last of the science crew dead, there's no reason to linger there. But that doesn't mean she can't loot the whole room. Commander Corey Shepard couldn't help but feel bad. For the scientists that she tried to rescue here but they drew guns on her first and so she headed out of the exogeny facility and back to the normandy there is one more spot on nota crux that commander Corey shepherd could get and that was a deposit of cobalt and with that she headed back to the normandy and the exploits of exogeny have been ended you know with how evil this company is you'd think it was run by jeff bezos but it was time it was time for Commander Corey Shepard to head to the Yangtze system in the Voyager cluster to investigate the Cerberus attack activities on Binthu. Cerberus being this stain on the Alliance. Kohoku asked her to check it out, and that's exactly what she's going to do. Heading to the Yangtze system in the Voyager cluster, she arrived and started scanning planets, with the first being Al Rumter, which she was able to scan for yet another Prothean data disk. On Dragir, she was able to scan for a source of beryllium and on Patajiri, she was able to scan for a large deposit of thorium and finally she headed to Benthu to see if she could find out what Cerberus was up to and so she headed down with a team of Liara and Garrus upon landing scans indicated a source of mineral nearby 
which was palladium. She found a second mineral deposit, this time uranium. Scanners picked up yet another Prothean pyramid. And in the distance, the Cerberus Research Facility. Running up to the top of the pyramid, she was able to recover another artifact. Another Prothean data disk. And it was time for her to assault the Cerberus facility. After taking out the guarding turrets, she got out of the Mako and proceeded inside. The first room had just one storage locker. So she proceeded deeper into the Cerberus research facility. Enemies immediately getting picked up on her scanner. As she approached, she saw some strange bug creature. So, she walked over to the diagnostic station and opened it, and then retreated to let that bug creature deal with the Cerberus enemies themselves. Watching out for the biotics of the research people, she was able to take down most of them. Only one more Cerberus agent remained. She eliminated the threat at that facility, but she needed to continue to the other nearby labs. But before doing that, she collected a crash probe. And that was everything that she could find on this planet, except for the two research facilities. So she headed to the next one. Approaching the second facility, she was yet again attacked by heavy turrets. And after taking them both out, she headed inside. This time into a very empty room with no items whatsoever. What a waste. Proceeding into the main room, yet again, more enemies being researched, this time Thorian Creepers. So she opened up the kinetic barriers and to retreated me. back to the other room. On me. Taking her squad with her. Commander Corey Shepard locking the door to let the Thorian Creepers deal with the Cerberus agents as best they can. Popping open the door and taking out the Cerberus commandos and research. Only a few remains as the commandos went flying thanks to the use of biotics. A research technician hiding behind one of the canisters fell very quickly. But there was no sign of Kohoku among the creeper corpses. He must be at one of the other labs in the area. And after looting all of the medical stations around the room, she headed to the final research facility on Benthus. And upon approaching the very final research facility, two more turrets guarded the way. She took them both out for some free XP and headed into the very final research facility. Yet again, entering into a completely empty room, she proceeded to the main area. Where yet again, a bunch of tiny little creatures behind a kinetic barrier that also seemed to hide a body. So she used the diagnostic station to open up and left the area. Only two more enemies remained, a technician and at the very far end, a sniper. I stopped him, Meg Shepard. We owe Kohoku that much. And after taking down every enemy we could find, we discovered that the body in the center of the room was Rear Admiral Kohoku. She checked for a pulse, but she didn't find any. Admiral Kohoku was dead. Despite the ferocity of the creatures he was sealed in with, there were no signs of trauma on his corpse. The needle marks on his arm suggested a different means of execution. Oh, goddess. It's Admiral Kohoku. Cerberus must have tracked him down. Back to the Normandy. We have a new assignment. Hades Dogs. We need to destroy the main Cerberus facility. She found the location of a major Cerberus facility, so she's going to head to Neferin in the Columbia system of the Voyager Cluster and destroy it. Arriving in the Columbia Cluster, she first went to Anta Heter and scanned for yet another deposit of Samarium. On the planet of Gromar, she was able to survey for ne another League of One medallion. And so she headed to the planet of Neferin to take down Cerberus once and for all. Or at least she hoped taking with her a party of Liara and Garrus. Upon landing, immediately, 
Picking up signs of a large mineral deposit. This time a deposit of thorium. And a deposit of platinum. And the last deposit of mineral, this time beryllium. And she also found a crashed probe, which she could salvage. Picking up something strange on her sensors, she headed off to the west side of the operating area. Driving to check out a strange anomaly that was picked up. It looked like an abandoned camp. She was beset upon by yet another Thresher Maw. And after a long battle, the Thresher Maw fell. And Commander Corey Se Shepard got 69,000 credits. Nice. And after looting the abandoned camp, she had one more spot to make before she took on the evil Cerberus. She found yet another mummified Solarian recovering a League of One medallion. And then she headed to the Cerberus facility, which had a ton of troops waiting outside. They were no match for the Mako and finishing the sniper as best she could. It was finally time to take down the main headquarters of Cerberus. This was for Admiral Kohoku. Proceeding into the first room, she looted what she could find and finally headed into the main floor of the facility. So she headed in cautiously, watching out for all the Cerberus snipers that had made their home here. last one fell she proceeded to the back of the Cerberus facility heading to the right first to loot whatever she could after looting everything she could she headed into the final room where she discovered no one waiting for her but a terminal that she could use she cautiously pressed a few buttons and an alarm chimed. The optical database is flashing itself. Quickly, she copied as many files as she could to her hard suit's internal computer. Its memory wiped, the computer shut down. The files are sure to be encrypted, but she's got time to crack them. So she archived the files. And just like that, she found a major Cerberus base and ended their sinister experiments in this cluster. She avenged Admiral Kahoku's death and she removed a danger that could have threatened the entire galaxy. So she was done here. She headed back to the Normandy. Transmission coming in, Commander. I think you're going to want to hear this one. Greetings, Commander Shepard. I represent a party interested in obtaining information on Cerberus activities. Who are you, and who do you represent? Who I am is inconsequential. Suffice to say, I am an agent for the Shadow Broker. You see, Admiral Kohoku contacted my employer looking for information on the location of any Cerberus facilities. We provided that information on the promise that he would turn over copies of all files gathered from the Cerberus systems to us. Interesting. So, did they know about Kohoku's death? Did you have anything to do with Admiral Kohoku ending up dead? We had no reason to harm him. He was going to provide us with information about Cerberus. Information that is now in your possession. You must have some connection to Cerberus. How else could you tell Kahoku where to find them? Information is our business, Commander. Through our contacts, we were able to determine that the Cerberus group was active in the Voyager cluster. Unfortunately, that was all we were able to find out. That is why we are so interested in acquiring copies of the files from you. That's treason. These are classified Alliance files. I'm not handing them over to you. Be reasonable, Commander. Cerberus was operating outside Alliance jurisdiction. You don't owe them any loyalty. The Alliance is just going to file this information away in some archive. No secret stays hidden forever. Eventually, someone somewhere will deliver it into our hands. Might as well be you. Transmit the files to us, and you will be well compensated. What are you going to do with this information? The information is a commodity. It can be bought, sold, or traded. Why my employer desires this information is not my concern. I am only the buyer. Commander Corey Shepard didn't trust Cerberus and wanted them to pay. So, she traded the information. I'll transmit the files. I knew you were a reasonable woman, Commander. My employer will remember this the next time you need something from us. 
And just like that, 103,000 credits and some renegade points for our Paragon, Commander Shepard. And just like that, Commander Corey Shepard has taken down the organization known as Cerberus. Or did she? I guess we'll be finding that out in Mass Effect 2. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. In the next episode of Mass Effect, we are going to head to Novaria and complete the story that we can there, which is very good. You're not going to want to miss that. New episodes premiering almost every day, uh, at, at, pretty much every day at 2 p.m. Eastern. I sincerely appreciate you guys and a huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres and a huge shout out to those of you on patreon.com slash missile online. I would not be able to do this series if it wasn't for you guys. So thank you so much. I hope you're enjoying the series. And remember, never give up. Never surrender to those Cerberus dogs. Bye, everyone. Almost forgot to show the squad screen. You're welcome.